So a while back, I released this video called ACR Problem Chat on the Chachi McSwack channel, where I talked about a whole lot of what the problems are with ACR, in my personal opinion, like in-game problems, matchmaking, and all that stuff. And I got a pretty positive response. I got the most likes of any of the videos I've ever posted, which is not to say all that many, but... I pledged to myself that I would provide visual documentation for all of the problems that I encountered. And here is your first clip. Me trying to get in a match of Assassinate, a video so long that it had to be posted on Ice on Fire 223. I am about to go through matchmaking for 18 minutes and 37 seconds trying to find an Assassinate match despite the fact that it tells me there are 20 or so matches available, which generally means there's more than 20. So yeah, there will not be a lot of action during this matchmaking to commentate, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about a whole bunch of issues I feel like discussing, and, well, some issues, just others, some information. So I'm going to start out with the first ECA, which went down recently. And, uh... It basically didn't happen very well, because we didn't have all that many people apply. My channel does not have all that many subscribers, and when you consider it, got 150 subscribers, you assume 120 of them are Assassin's Creed subscribers. You say half of those guys are on PS3, and of the 60 that remain, perhaps 20 play Brotherhood, and of those 40, a whole bunch of pros, like... Neenkin, Rain and Stormwake, all those people. So you don't have that big a pool of subscribers that are going to apply for it, but nonetheless, eventually I hope to have it mentioned by some more subscribe guys and we'll actually get it up and running, but we only had five applicants, and of those, two of them were no-shows, one had connection problems, and one wasn't a noob, he was only in there because it was his birthday. So... Basically, it just ended up being me, Ninkin, and Jester teaching one guy, pretty much, about how to free run and stuff. And then Ninkin had to leave for a clan scrimmage with VAA against WLP. So, it didn't go as planned. It was, I would assume the guy who was in it will comment that it was helpful to him. And you see me there using friend dares to get out. There are two ways to get out if you get in a lobby that you don't want to be in. And friend dares are one of them. But never accept an introductory session friend dare. I'll never have to because it's unlikely anybody else is going to beat my scores on either of them. So you just accept the dare. It'll put you in a search for that game mode. And then you switch. And yeah, that's basically all there is about ECA. So now I'm going to get to the big topic which is this patch and a lot of my subscribers may be on the Ubisoft forums may be aware of what's going on there there's a whole lot of people talking about this patch people didn't like it and I'm gonna go with my personal opinion in the midst of all the arguing over whether the patch was good or not and whether you're welcome to be happy with it on the Ubisoft forums uh, there are basically four big changes in this patch that affect Assassinate. And the most major one is the inability to lock during kill and stun animations, which frankly is utterly terrible. That is the worst part of the patch. There is no reason that they should have put that in. I don't understand why they did. Like, nobody asked for the ability to, or the lack of ability to lock during kill animations. Nobody really dis nobody really said it was unfair or skewed toward pros a lot of players didn't even realize you could do it and certainly didn't realize it was a common tactic at the upper levels and so I just don't get why Ubisoft decided to do that it was a terrible idea it's damaged competitive assassinate severely noob assassinate lobbies are now a lot more prevalent and they're still very easy to rack up disgusting scores in like I've been averaging a higher score since the patch because of the noob lobbies. I've been averaging like 12 and 13 Ks. And I got a 16 and a 17 K, but they weren't really legit because I was against one noob and two AFK people that I just schemed all the points off of. So, yeah, I'll be uploading a few of my post-patch videos, and I still have some pre-patch videos that I'll do too. 
and I may display some of the damaging difference in light of the lock problems. One of the other major changes they made was smoke bombs are disgustingly overpowered. <laughs> News flash, like nobody knew this. No, they are now even more overpowered, as in, basically, the new smoke bomb radius is you drop a smoke bomb, and any players on the map are affected by it. That might as well be what they're doing now, but now that it has three dimensions, I supported it having three dimensions, because it was really fucking stupid on Souk when you drop a smoke bomb in the middle area and people would just walk through it and kill you because there's a little tear there. That was stupid, but it should not have been as much as they did. The smoke's height should only go as high as the actual smoke itself does, which is not the case. It goes like twice as high as the actual smoke bomb, meaning if you run up a wall to dodge it or something, it will still hit you and it will knock you down. Or at the very least, you won't be able to get the kill and they'll just run away. So, the, it's not as big of a problem to me as the fact that you can throw smoke in the first place. That's just fucking retarded. And should never have been added in this game. That's something on the level of keeping the gun in this game and adding animus hacks in terms of how fucking stupid they are. But, yeah. Then there's the change to mute, which is mute now affects every single player around you. It doesn't only hit people that have locked you. Which is a change I very much like because it's it balances out the fact that you can't lock in animations anymore. So if you don't have a smoke, you're basically defenseless. But now that mute hits people who haven't locked you, yeah. And by the way, you may have this video like muted or something or in the background not muted certainly but hidden behind something and if you watch there is actually a relatively interesting thing to notice which is it will say no session was found with your preferred game mode we'll look for shit in the other playlist you just noticed it put me an artifact assault on Rome right there if you didn't see it go back and look it put me an artifact assault on Rome and it's going to do it again later in about five minutes on Venice Night. So Ubisoft can't even fuck up properly when it comes to this matchmaking, which is the biggest problem of all of ACR, and it was not even remotely touched in their patch, except there is a little bit more lag in-game now, which is pointless. I don't understand why that had to happen. Um, but yeah, back to the mute shit. They clearly made that mute change, hoping that uh, it would balance out how overpowered they made Smoke now, but it doesn't work that way because they have to, you basically have to use Smoke and Poison now, because without the locking mid-kill, Poison is the only way to get double kills, which is a very important thing to be able to do in Assassinate, and yeah. Mute doesn't really matter at that point if you have to have smoke and poison. You're behind if you're not using smoke poison at this point. Especially when you take into account the fourth change, which is that poison no longer gets you stunned every time you use it. They have to stun you exactly simultaneously to how you poison them. It has to be at the exact same time for them to get the stun off, which is a change I completely approve of. It's improved deathmatch greatly. I was able to hit my first 10k in deathmatch in light of the poison and stun changes, and I was able to do the same thing in Manhunt with uh, 10.5, or a 10.2 I think it was, because I was able to use poison and my teammates sucked enough that they weren't able to steal my poison kills, although they for sure tried. Your teammates will always try to take your poison kills if you don't personally know the team you're playing with. I joined BHR Snipe Down after a while because I am tired of searching. And it puts me in a lobby that has plenty of people in it and doesn't allow me to select my players. So I'm just stuck in there. You'll see that when it happens. I try it twice, it happens both times. Just like I get put in Artifact Assault twice. 
the I'm getting really off topic here. I keep just throwing stuff about the video in there, but yeah. So that is basically my opinion on the patch. I despise the changes to uh, locking and the fact that they did not fix ground finish and teammate lock priority in Manhunt. That was a huge problem and they pledged to fix it and they just didn't. It still doesn't work. And it can sometimes be harder to lock your target. The high profile lock in Assassinate is still just absolutely terrible. It still will not unlock if there's anyone on the map running in your line of sight. And if you're trying to chase somebody or you want to unlock them while they're chasing someone because you're not interested in running after them, doesn't matter. Fuck you. You're just going to keep on locking them in alternate order. And there's so little you can do about it. I thought in Brotherhood the Y to release contract was solid. Although you could do it in smoke bombs, which was pretty fucking stupid. I just discovered that playing with Rain and NG and Needkin and a couple others on Brotherhood last night. That they can unlock you inside your smoke bomb. It's, it's so dumb. It makes them ninja dodge your stun and then they lock you while dodging and kill you. It's so stupid. But yeah. All of this having been said, I'm gonna move on and talk about my perception of a few of the common sort of playstyle norms in different ACR modes based on what I've encountered lately. And the primary one is I recently played Manhunt, I believe it was two days ago, against the team of Giaquinto718, Esco Blades, and the base 287. And that's a pretty solid team. It's not VAA clan scrim solid or anything. But I had some fun games, but I later heard from Rain and Stormwake that all three of them were raging intensely about the fact that I was using offensive smoke bomb in Manhunt, and the fact that I was throwing my smoke in, and all of that. And I'm gonna go ahead and talk a little about how I feel about that whole offensive smoke shenanigans. Here's the deal. If the defensive team is coordinated and they are planning to drop four smokes and four mutes on you as soon as you come within 10 yards and then try to punch you as much as possible, I don't consider it gay to throw in a smoke so that they can't just screw with you like that. Like, it's not point starving to throw in a smoke bomb, it's getting you points yourself. It's not like running around on the rooftops the entire defense round in Manhunt. That is point starving. Offensive smoke is not point starving, but they're angry because it breaks up their little stun party. And along with the gun, but I don't like the gun because it's not even a close range kill. With offensive smoke, at least it's a close range kill. And they got so mad at me for using offensive smoke. And here are the options. I can use offensive smoke, I can roof, I can offensive mute, <laughs> that's not being considered. I can use disguise as Giaquinto suggested to me on Twitter today, but I don't consider, I feel like that would only work at one specific time because you have to get there before your team does, otherwise it won't matter because there will still be an impenetrable wall of smoke here I'm gonna join BHR Snipe Down and you'll watch as I'm not even eligible to pick a character. It just does not want me to play Assassinate right now. And the other option is just waiting until all of their abilities are gone, at which point they will either naked stun you as soon as you get a kill or just run away point starving because that's what teams do in Manhunt. And of all of those choices, I will consider trying out Disguise, but I'm not going to stop offensive smoking. I personally don't like it when I walk in and they drop four smoke bombs on me trying to stun me as much as possible. I find that just as gay as offensive smoke. I find it takes just as little skill. Neither of the two takes skill. Manhunt offense takes skill. Manhunt defense takes skill after the abilities are gone, but when it's just spamming smoke bomb and mute, I despise the fact that they consider themselves as super advanced uber players because they can smoke bomb you over and over and over while you're on the ground. What is impressive about that? 
I get the fact that getting a whole bunch of stuns without dying is impressive when there is an entire team of four people trying to kill you. I do not get the fact that it's considered gay to fight against them stunning you like that. That doesn't make any sense to me, and it's not going to, and I'm going to stop the commentary here for a second while I figure out what to talk about for these next three minutes of fuck Ubisoft matchmaking, so I'll be right back. Alright, got it. We're gonna talk about some of my planned AC3 multiplayer changes. What I would put in the AC3 multiplayer that they probably won't because they don't tend to put smart things in the multiplayer first and obviously foremost is the gun needs to be removed because who the fuck honestly thinks there should be a gun in this game. The people only say, like, they're like, oh, well, we gotta use it to kill those gay roofers and, like, want it in deathmatch. <laughs> well, frankly, you need to learn how to deal with those roofers, especially if you ever want to play in advanced mode such as Assassinate, and the gun is not the way to do it. So you need to man up, figure out how to get up there, dodge their stupid abilities, and kill them, because as an Assassinate roofer myself, I can tell you, they are not invincible if you don't use the gun. And then we're going to move on to maps. What do I have to say about maps? Well, I don't really care as long as there are some good maps. I hope there's still a few city maps and they're not all just free running on trees. Although that idea does sound pretty badass. But shit like Souk needs to not be in there. I had a match on Souk yesterday, Assassinate, where a sentinel killed a count and then locked me. I dropped a smoke, stunned him, and poisoned him. Then he was shot by a courtesan on top of a wall, so I ran up the wall to grab kill the courtesan, and she was shot by a guardian standing in a chase breaker. So I ran up to charge the guardian and got chase killed by the count who the sentinel had killed. If a map is small enough that a chase breaker, or the chase breaker, what the fuck am I talking about? Kill chain can come full circle with kills that happen as quickly as gunshots, it's a fucked up map and should not be used for assassinate. You need space in assassinate. While it's fun to be able to move around and have kill chains every now and then, you shouldn't be vulched every single time you attempt to kill someone. That's just dumb. And, you know, that map is all ground too. No roofs, no free running independence. For someone with an extensive single player background such as myself, whose play style involves so much free running, it's just not fun for me. It'd be fun if I could do anything during the kill chains, but you can't because they pulled out the fucking mid-kill locking. So, that option is gone. Uh, I hope, really, the key thing for AC3 multiplayer is it needs good matchmaking. I don't want to be going through the shit I am in this video right now in AC3. If I, frank frankly, if I get AC3 and I'm going to play through the single player first... And then I hop in multiplayer and encounter this again. I'm just returning the game. I'm not going to deal with this again. They need to figure out how to make it so that I can play with my friends and that I can play the modes I actually want to play. And that's basically it. I hope you guys haven't enjoyed this video because there was nothing whatsoever interesting about the visual content. But I hope you guys have enjoyed my talk about some of my problems and what I hope they'll do with AC3. I'm gonna be posting some more post-patch assassinate vids coming up soon. Yeah. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Chachi out.